Hello, how's it going? This story today starts a month or so ago when I was setting up the music computer room at this museum's not obsolete. It's basically a room full of uh, old computers that are running old computer programs from Cubase, Commodore 64s, and there's some old Macintoshes as well running some old programs like Rebirth. Rebirth is a late 90s music software program that came out in 1997, I think it is. And Rebirth 338 version 2 contains two synthesizers and two drum machines and a handful of basically effects pedals. In essence, it's a really limited piece of music software, but that actually adds to its charm. When I loaded it onto the computer, I hadn't played on it in a while and it reminded me how good and immediate it actually was. You load it straight up and you're able to start going. And in a way, it's sort of set up like how I would set up a uh, hardware synthesizers it's kind of like got a setup that you can basically play a you know live and make up stuff on the fly and the fact it hasn't got too many options like reason which came after and all of the other digital audio workstations it actually makes it quite a fun and performative piece of software and yeah I found myself for about an hour or so just messing around with the parameters on the demo song and just having quite a bit of fun yeah. After that, I read through the manual, kind of learning all of the hotkeys and the shortcut key commands and stuff to be able to program things in on the fly. And I found out it was really well set up to receive MIDI commands, which means that every single knob and switch is assigned a certain MIDI note or MIDI number to be able to externally control them. That means that back in the day, you could have programmed the knobs and uh, faders on top of your MIDI controller to be able to talk directly to the knobs in Rebirth. Of course, nowadays, this is old hat and everything seems to do it. However, unlike more complicated pieces of MIDI software, the note numbers are hard assigned to the knobs in Rebirth, which means the second second rebirth loads up no matter what it's doing it's going to be set up the same way as it always has been which in essence makes it much more immediate much like hardware synthesizers it's worth noting that rebirth also has a song mode which means you can program songs into it but it's a bit clunky by today's standard and we're not going to be focusing on that instead we're going to be focusing on rebirth's live jam potential when i was going through the manual i did a patreon live stream kind of jamming it and trying to make things up on the fly and adjust parameters program the drums are you ready Oh yeah, it just has to come afterwards. Let's go for an A on the lowest octave. Yeah, and then turn it on. So with any luck, that'll just be one note. Yeah, here we go. And there were certain instances that I wanted to adjust two things at the same time, which a MIDI controller with knobs on top of it would have really helped because you can twist two knobs at the same time and you can't do that with a mouse. However, the downside with any of the MIDI controller setups is they're not quite set up the same as Rebirth. You could put a bunch of labels on it, but you're never gonna get it matching exactly, which got me thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we made a dedicated MIDI controller for Rebirth just for funsies? And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So without further ado, let's get building. The first thing I did was go through the manual and figure out all of the parameters that I thought were sensible to have on this controller. And then I laid out a bunch of knobs to try and figure out how to make it ergonomically nice and stuff. And it ended up being twice as big as I was expecting. So I had to use two panels. The first panel was mainly for all of the uh, big controls for the volumes and the filters and stuff. Anyway, I started drilling all of the holes into the panel and sanding it down and then giving it a nice black spray paint and then getting out the silver sharpie and doing some doodling. That's how you do it. I made sure to write everything reasonably clear, but I've had to update it later on because I couldn't read some of my writing after a while. Then I put all of the components into the panel. These are the switches and the potentiometers that I'm using. Then we had to pop over to the shop to get some supplies. That ain't go. That might go somewhere, but it'll be all right. We're only going down the road.
So yeah, it needed a custom case as well because it was quite a big project. Uh, the back of it was some offcuts that I already had. Luckily, it all started to fit together and I was, I was pretty pleased, but this was before all of the wiring. But before that, I gave it a dash of varnish to make it look quite nice. Ooh, look at that, that's quite lovely. And then that's a shot of me putting on the knobs. Amazingly enough, this took a couple of hours because there are a lot of knobs, obviously. And then yes, it was a couple of days of solid slogging just soldering and soldering and soldering. The red wires are the positive voltage, the black wires are the ground. These are the multiplexes that we're going to be using. We'll talk about the project and the electronics in a little bit, but basically it's the same as the Sega Mega Drive synthesizer, which is using the notes and volts MIDI controller program. The link is below for more information on that, but yeah, I basically took it to the nth degree. Uh, I did some cable lacing to try and neaten it up because it was getting pretty messy pretty quickly. But as you can see, I've decided to use Molex connectors because it's all very ununiform panel and I just like the way they look and the way they work. I just, re I really like the way to wire it like this. So if you have a better way, then do it that way, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. Anyway, after that's done, we can start testing it. So I got out the iMac and I also wired in the Arduino and downloaded the notes and volts example code. It's really a walk in the park if you do it this way. Follow the tutorials and you don't have to do any coding whatsoever. You just have to specify what multiplexes you have and uh, what uh, kind of MIDI designations they are. And then it turned into a bit of a faff because I had to get it talking via MIDI to the iMac. I tried this modern MIDI interface. It didn't work, so I went for the MIDI Man MIDI Sport 2x2. Luckily, this came with the driver as well as this nice M-powered artist CD. We'll have a listen to that in a little bit but we need to carry on trying to figure out this problem so we plop in the cd that's got all the drivers look how cool that looks and how slow it's loading uh yeah i don't miss that at all so i loaded all of the drivers up and after a little bit of figuring out and twiddling around it started to work and then i started designating the midi notes on the arduino code with the switches and the knobs yeah hello this is a bit of a courtesy update to show you where it's at it makes this program so fun to use. We're not out of the woods yet. We had another couple of days of slogging and soldering for the next panel. And boom! Just sorting out all of the uh, settings so they're actually matching up, but it's, it's coming along. Oh, they don't like these ones. Oh, let's, let's give it a go. Let's see what you think, Mr. Heimberg. MIDI interface. I think it's cool. <laughs> right, it needs a bit of work. There's a bit of figuring out to it, but it actually, I think it all seems to work. And then... Terrodrome. Yeah, well, <laughs> all I can seem to get is four to the floor right now. And then I'll bring it out the same old thing.
Does it fit? It feels more like an analog interface, like in your head. It does, it does. Of course, I still hear the same sounds that I heard before. So that's the same thing. So like, ah, I remember this and ah. So, yeah, yeah. But it, you can go to different places with this. Yeah. Especially like doing less. That was trying to, with all the patterns, doing less and less and less and less. So I took it over to this museum's not obsolete, unfortunately just after it closed. So Heimbach got to have a go and uh, Yuri popped in as well. But it seems to give a different perspective upon the software, which is exactly what I was looking for. It manages to give a good hands-on feel of the actual program, which takes you to different places. By the way, if you want to play with it, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be at this museum's not obsolete on the open day, so you can give it a go for yourself. Anyway, let's have a little bit more of a play. So as you can see, there's still a bit of experimenting to do. There is a part two to this project, which is gonna get a whole lot bigger and it'll be in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna be building up towards that. Are we gonna be taking it somewhere else to merge it into a much bigger project entirely? There's other things that I'm gonna get to grasps with in the meantime. That is, for instance, the uh, sequence programming with the hotkeys on the keyboard. So you can basically program sequences on the fly. I'm gonna be doing a Patreon live stream investigating it further later on in the week. But yeah, expect a part two with an even more expanded project in the next couple of weeks. You can check all of the updates on Patreon, including the ones that have already happened and the ones that are yet to happen, as well as download sound packs and watch live. 
live streams. Like I said, if you want to play with it yourself, then you can pop over and try it out. This museum's not obsolete. And yeah, until next time, I'm Luke Mum No Computer, and don't be scared to try it. Ooh.